what is happens before authoring interviewer can ask you this question directly or he can give you a scenario based question where two threads are trying to read and write a shared variable at the same time so because of advent of multi core cpus we have to be very careful in designing multi threaded applications because without even knowing we can create race conditions in our code so let's see this typical cpu architecture nowadays uh, we have multi core cpus you can see that we have four cores in this cpu nowadays cpu doesn't read from the main memory rather they load the variables on which computation needs to be done into the cache memory so cpu uses several layers of caches so you can see from the diagram we have uh, l1 and l2 cache for every core and l3 is the common cache so access time for cache is much faster than the main memory so you can assume that when you come from cpu from the individual cores till the main memory latency increases with caches reading and writing becomes much faster as compared to the main memory so access to main memory is quite expensive you know if we have already talked about because of latency and let's see one diagram now which i downloaded from intel website you can see from the left column we have a memory type wherein we have l1 l2 and l3 cache and then we have latency in this column so you can see that l2 cache is four times slower than l1 cache if we talk about reading the data and l3 is 10 times slower than l2 and if you talk about main memory main memory is two times slower than l3 okay so so from this diagram it is clear that why cpus uh, load data into the caches first now we have a trade off also with the with the speed which is uh, the size of the memory so cache size is very small as compared to main memory you can see that l1 cache is only 32 kb but we have main memory which can be in gigabytes so why happens before required so in a multi threading application we know that there can be multiple threads reading and writing at the same time for example let's assume we have one integer variable a and there are two threads also thread t1 wants to update the value of a to 10 and another thread t2 wants to read the value of a and assign the value to b okay so what if i say that both the threads runs at the very same time what would be the value of b pause the video and think about it if we don't have happens before ordering then we cannot predict the value of b because we don't know the ordering of t1 and t2 in the cpu we don't know okay so it can have value as either 10 or 0 so 0 is the default value of integer so if we say that we have happens before ordering and thread t1 runs before thread t2 in other words i can say 10 value is assigned to a first and then we assign the value of a to b in this case we are sure that b will have the value as 10 so this happens before ordering is guaranteed by java memory model otherwise we may see unpredictable results in our multi threaded code so how do we achieve happens before ordering so java language specification gives us many constructs to achieve this such as synchronization volatile join and concurrent classes in java.util.concurrent package which were added in java 1.5 for synchronized we can say that an unlock of an object's monitor happens before acquiring lock on the same monitor in simple terms we can say that if there are two threads t1 and t2 so t2 can acquire lock only if t1 releases the lock okay similar is for volatile keyword if we use volatile field a write operation always happens before every subsequent read of the same field okay so in this way we are sure that you know we have happens before contract then we have methods of uh, classes in java.util.concurrent package so you can see that uh, all the methods such as lock dot unlock semaphore dot release countdown latch dot countdown they happen before all the actions such as lock dot lock semaphore dot acquire 
count count down last dot array in the same object. So let me show you examples in uh, concurrent package in Java doc. So you can see that this is a package summary for Java dot concurrent. And we have multiple interfaces and classes here, which supports happens before. Let me show you countdown latch first. So if you go to countdown latch, it has been explicitly mentioned that this class abide by the happens before contract. So uh, read here until the count reaches zero actions in a thread prior to calling countdown happen before actions following a successful return. Similar is for concurrent map. So concurrent map is an interface uh, uh, which is uh, implemented by concurrent hash map. So if you go here and you can also see that actions in a thread prior to placing an object into concurrent map as a key or value happen before action subsequent to the access or removal of that object from the map. Okay. So in this way, you know, all the concurrent classes and the collections ensures happens before ordering. Now we'll move to one example in Java code and I'll de demonstrate how happens before is uh, ensured by synchronized. So I have one happens before class and one shared variable int i in that. Then increment method increments the value of i for thousand times. Then I have get value. So this get value returns the current value of i. So I'll create two threads here and uh, these two threads will call uh, increment and get value. So I have two threads T1 and T2. In T1 I am calling increment method and uh, in T2 I am uh, printing the thread name and the value of i. So I have given the name T2 to the thread T2 so that we can see that in sysout. Now I will create a main method that will uh, call this trigger method uh, on uh, happens before object. call start method so i'll call t1.start and t2.start okay these two threads run let me run this now so the value is as expected 1000 so let me change the value from 1000 to 20000 because we were not getting stale value now we should see some deviation from expected result now we are iterating 20000 and uh, doing i plus plus let me run this now yeah you can see that value is 14287 so which is uh, you know way less than 20000 which is expected value let me run this again now you can see value of i is zero so we're not sure you know uh, what could be the value here because this is a classic race condition how can we fix this so we know that uh, Synchronized is uh, one of the construct which we can use uh, to fix race condition and which ensures happens before ordering. So now we want that uh, all writes to i should happen before the read. So I have added the synchronized block and let's run this. Yeah, you can see that the value is now 20,000 which is the expected one. So you can see that with synchronized you achieve uh, happens before ordering. So now reads are waiting till write finishes on on the i. So uh, this is the synchronized method. You can also use synchronized block here. So let me create uh, one object here. In the object, I'll use this object uh, inside my synchronized block. Now I have changed uh, synchronized method to synchronized blocks and uh, used one object. So write should happens before read. So let's run this. We should get 20,000 value. Yeah, you can see it's 20,000. So you can try this uh, at uh, your end. And uh, if you want to see my other videos on synchronization and uh, race condition, you can check that out. I'll give the link in description below. Thanks for watching. Do subscribe.